Yeah, simply one of the greatest cricketers to ever play the game, Brian Lara. Such a thrill to have you with us. Thanks uh, so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get to that and all that on field, uh, obviously uh, you were in Sydney. I saw pictures of you last night walking the red carpet with uh, Brad and Angelina. Did you get to spend some quality time? <laughs> not with them, but my lady. Yeah, oh, we, right. we watched a good movie. It's not a bad movie at all. You know, now, I, I just want to get, before we get to uh, specifics about the game, you have, uh, the president wanted to meet you. You're in dictionaries, you're in every cricketer's bio, you're mentioned hugely. Uh, you've done so many wonderful things. What in your head stands in that list of the thing that makes, gives you the greatest buzz about what you've achieved so far in your life? I think just the, the continuous um, opportunity to put the pads on. And even uh, during my cricketing days, going out to play an, in, an international innings for the West Indies was something that was very, very special for me. And even now, uh, presently, you know, the occasional game, I just played a game in a guitar to open the new stadium. And I wasn't paid by that um, football chief. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, just getting out there, and I don't know if you watched, I played a game at Lords as well, yep. and when uh, Bretley bowled uh, Shane Warner Beamer. That's right. That? Yeah. 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 So these, uh, these occasions are very special for me. So you obviously miss and love the game so much, you still yeah. want to get yeah, on the ground. Yeah, every time I have the opportunity to put on the white clothes, I, I do, and um, I will never refuse at Lords. Uh, I, I hope to be invited to Sydney to play a game one day, because it's one of my favourite grounds. Uh -huh. Well, it's special, Sydney. Uh, because you named your daughter Sydney, didn't you? After yeah, your innings yeah, that yeah. you had here, so it is a special place for you. Very special place, and um, it's not much places you go to to, to bat um, a little bit intoxicated. Um, you know, after spending years Eve out in the town in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> 277 was the result. Two days, two days later, you have a test match. <laughs> I'm guessing you named her after that test innings, but um, she's 18 now. Just. Tell us a little bit about her. Has she been to Sydney much? And She's never been to Sydney. She and uh, yeah, I left home a couple of days ago and uh, tears came to my eyes. She was playing volleyball. She insists that I come. I was you know, flying a few hours later and just to see my daughter out there playing a sport, being competitive, you know, runs in the blood. That's a good thing. And does she like her name, more importantly? Uh, she loves her name. And she's planning to take a gap year next year and come out to Sydney. Brian, you had some great battles with the Australians and they used to have this standard game plan, don't sledge Brian Lara, you'll fire him up. And the boys reckon it used to last about seven seconds <laughs> when, when you walked on and then it'd be on. But you used to love it, didn't you? I love it. I mean, um, Darren Lehman stood there and he said, take care of your step with me. You know, Bradley was coming down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I think that was a, a key component in, in really getting me going. I, I love the fact that they wanted to come out against me. I love the fact traveling to Australia, to England, and playing against, yes, the English team, but, you know, 40, 50,000 people watching, and um, that spurred on my efforts throughout my career. It was interesting because you averaged 50 against Australia, you scored nine centuries against some of the best attacks ever, yet you'd sort of win the battle, but they'd win the war, wouldn't they, often, a, a lot of times. So how did you feel in your battles against them? Very upsetting. Those were very upsetting times, you know, especially watching the West Indies in the 70s and 80s dominate you know, Australia, whoever they played against. And to be a part of that team and to, to perform well and not win, those were uh, sad moments. But um, I would never exchange those moments for any time because uh, it built my character and uh, I enjoyed my period of, of cricket. Brian, you mentioned the West Indies in the 70s and 80s and, gee, it was a glorious, absolutely champion, champion era. What do you make of West Indian cricket in the current day? Uh, disappointing. I mean, uh, I came into a team that was declining. You know, a lot of people, you know, uh, placed the blame on the, the mid-90s, the guys who came up during that time, but we were declining in the late 80s and early 90s when the, the great players were still around. They were getting a bit older. And uh, that's just sort of spiral into what we see right now. Um, confusion off the field, not any great performances on the field, but we still possess some of the best talent. You know, we are the most sought-after cricketers in the IPL. Chris Gale, Bravo, Dwayne Smith, Pollard. Yet as a team, we, we are still unable to get it, uh, to get it going. Do, do the kids, I mean, you're what, uh, 11 children in your family. Yes. Do kids in the West Indies still have the same dream to play for cricket for the West Indies now? Or there's so many other things competing in terms of that dr sporting dream? It's like football now. You know, you dream to play for Barcelona or Man United. Kids in the West Indies are dreaming to play in the IPL. <laughs> the big bash, no longer for West Indies. It's a lot of big money in that form of the game, and um, it's unfortunate, but I think we've lost that 
you know, love for the game in the Caribbean. Yes, there are distractions, and uh, that's a good thing, I believe. You know, kids are going off, doing other things. The American sports is coming into the West Indies a lot. But I still believe that we have the resources, the human resources. We're just not harnessing it properly. Do you think it can be turned around at all, Brian? Because you say you've got the best talent going around. And I read recently you said you've got that, you take that good talent and turn it into ordinary talent by the time they come through. Well, I think the answer is right there. We need a change from on top. And a lot of people place the blame, I suppose, with the, the confusion with the players, our performance out there in the middle. On the surface, you say again, it's the players. But I believe we don't have the infrastructure in for us to get back to those glory days. And until we, until we do that, you're going to see us sporadically performing well, beating the best teams in the world, yet not on a consistent basis. You've got hundreds, 200s, 300s, 400s and 500s. Uh, for most of it, that's akin to you know, going into space. Uh, <laughs> attention spans difficult for someone like me. What, when you're batting that length of time, the effort, the concentration, do weird things go through your head? Yeah, at any I, I just want to beat the bowling, that's all. Really? Just get out there and beat the bowling. I, I mean, I know it's long periods, but um, I set my mind out. I don't really have a milestone. I want to score 100. I know that my captain is going to bat for five sessions. I want to bat for five sessions. You know, I look at a hot pretty girl in the stands, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Adam Gilchrist said that uh, you were such a confident player against spin bowling that sometimes when he made a change in the field, you'd say, ah, bad move, and you'd hit it to where the guy had been moved from. Like, if you moved the guy from there to there, you'd say, don't know about that one, Adam. And uh, you must fess up. True story? That's a true story, but I was, maybe I, I was on 100 already. <laughs> but, but something happened, you could just play spin better than, most, than nearly everyone. Why? I believe that uh, growing up in the, in the southern part of the Caribbean, um, I don't know if this is the right explanation, but the indentured laborers from India traveling to the West Indies in whatever century, traveled down to Guyana and Trinidad. And uh, down in those parts, we have a lot of Indian uh, players bowling spin. And I grew up at school level playing with some of the best spinners in, in the Caribbean. And I believe that is really one of the reasons. Also playing uh, cricket in the streets with uh, tennis balls. If you grip that tennis ball and hit it into that pitch, it's going to spin a mile. And um, I believe that helped me a lot. Speaking of spinners, I mean, you've got a beautiful house. You've got mirrors on your ceilings, warning star. <laughs> <laughs> no mirrors, and uh, I don't have Angus Fraser's name. <laughs> I can't name. <laughs> a lot of people believe that the, the bowling attack that handed me that record, yep. uh, and their names plastered all over my picture. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you got Barack Obama's phone number, Brian, when you uh, met him? What, what was that moment like? That was an, uh, uh, an amazing time. Um, he walked into the room and... And he said, uh, it's just myself and Sydney. And he said, uh, I heard you're the Michael Jordan of cricket. But I've never heard that before. So <laughs> coming from him, it was a special thing. And he spent five minutes, I think, you know, it was going to be like 10 seconds, sign an autograph. But he wanted to find a little bit more about the game. I signed a bat for him. Wow. You know, that stance you see there all around the world, where myself teaching to bat, mm. his first grip was baseball. Yeah. I said, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to move that front yeah. foot and you've got to get that elbow pointing. And uh, he, was, he was great. Well, to I don't know if you know, but he used that bat on Vladimir Putin at the <laughs> <laughs> so, so we want to thank you for that. <laughs> you've had some amazing innings at the SCG and you said the place is so special to you. I just want to be a little bit cheeky for a moment, but does the name Zoe Goss ring a bell at all yeah, to yeah, you? Do you yeah. remember this at the SCG going back quite a few years ago where it was a, it was a, it was a testimonial I it. match? I remember it. I remember it. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a genuine wicket she got there. There was no, uh, there was no giving away my wicket. Um, <laughs> She got you out twice in the one ball, didn't she? It was caught and bowled and stumped. And stumped. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad action. Brian, I'd be interested to know from you who impressed you the most as a batsman in your career. Who, who do you think is the best batsman of all time? Well, I have to say that Sir Vivian Richards uh, was definitely the best batsman I have ever seen. In terms of a complete batsman, Sachin Tendulkar has to be that complete bat batsman. But if I wanted to, to enjoy cricket and to be someone, you know, that entertained nobody like the Richards. What about the other thing? What about bowler? Was a macram by a mile. So oh, one yeah. guy who I felt if I walked out about after scoring 400, he would put me in some trouble, and it was Was macram special. Glenn McGrath, yes, got me out the most times, but his, his patience and his uh, consistency with line and length is really what was his strength. 
We've been uh, discussing on the show earlier, and it's a big topic around the country at the moment, Michael Clark. Now, you're good mates with Michael Clark. I don't know if you've spoken to him since you've been out here, but the whole hamstring issue, where do you see, is it key for him to pull back from one-day games and concentrate in test matches? I think Michael would know best, and uh, every captain or player would love to play in a, a World Cup at home. I'm not sure he wants to play in another World Cup, so I think he's got to know how to guide himself towards that. It's, it's maybe two or three months away from it. Uh, he might have to stay away from the Indian series. There are more test matches to play. And there's no doubt that he loves test cricket more than anything else. So I think he may settle into test cricket after that. Uh, the injuries are unfortunate, but it happens. Brian, what about um, uh, Kirtley Ambrose, who never said a word in Australia? He would brood at reporters and Mr. Sullen, but they always said he was a different guy, the great West Indian fast bowler behind closed doors. What was Kirtley Ambrose like? He's different uh, on occasions, but not all the time. I remember rooming with him in uh, Adelaide and uh, getting off the bus, he said, I'm rooming at you, do not touch my bed. <laughs> 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 I was walking past his bed with my two suitcases and uh, I touched his feet. You know how long he yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah. And I happened to have the door open and Courtney Walsh came in and Ambrose had me by the <laughs> It's just very comforting to know that you found him weird too. Yes. <laughs> very weird. I've played against him a few times, but um, I was very well, happy to be standing at slip. Yeah. Well, well, they did say that one of the great contests in English county cricket was Ambrose versus Lara, and he went at you, didn't he? He really went at you. He did. Um, he got me in the head, and I was lucky. He had about three or four balls left in that particular over, and he pitched it up. And I got into the dressing room at lunchtime, the Warwickshire dressing room, and my teammates were upset, they were sad. I said, what's the problem? If that was me, I was going to get five more bounces. <laughs> so my teammates wanted me to get more bounces. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, how's your golf game going? I know you're going to play in the Pro-Am, the Australian uh, Open. I know, that's, a, that's another buzz in my life. Golf, playing golf with my best friend, Dwight York, who you guys have known, came out here to play for Sydney. Uh, I look forward to golf, it's special. I wish I played it a lot more often. I used to bum a lift from school on an evening and the golf course was right behind my back and I never looked around, age 12 to, to 18. And I got the bug at age 24 and it's been, it's been with, me, with me since. And you're playing off three? I, yeah, I, I, look, I called my club, they said three. Um, two point something uh, index. Unfortunately, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win any money at three. Yeah, but you'll get a big crowd of people surrounding you, watching you go about your job, as you should. It's such an honour to have you in the studio with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.